Hi guys. Um, okay, so thank you for showing up. I realize that with Thanksgiving coming, the pressure to bunk off is really strong. Uh, uh, so we won't meet on Thursday unless you particularly want to. Okay, right. And uh, then we have a review session on Tuesday. Uh, so there is no reading for next time, as it were, except everything we've done so far. And then that's it. Uh, I'll actually be away on fr on the Thursday. Okay, so... Uh, Are you going home? Am I going back? Are you going home? Are we going home? <laughs> Where's home? <laughs> Glasgow. <laughs> right. Actually, I'm not really Scottish. I just put this accent on for a laugh. Right. Can no, this is my best American accent. <laughs> uh, where was I? <laughs> um, okay, so uh, uh, today is... Um, I, I want to look at questions about what in the literature are called internalism and externalism, uh, and Clark and Chalmers' article, The Extended Mind. So this is a, a, a little bit loosely connected to what we've been doing the last couple of times. But um, the general topic here has been so important in recent discussions about the mind that uh, uh, we really can't not do this. Um, so suppose we start out by looking at what physicalism is. Physicalism, the view that it's one world and it's a physical world, yeah, and how you make that, how you say more explicitly what that means. Well, remember our friend's possible world? Possible worlds? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so there are lots of different ways things could have been. And uh, each world is a kind of maximal collection of ways things could have been. Right? A total space, include each one includes all of space and time and all the ways that all of space and time could have been. One of these worlds is special, uh, the actual world. Um, and some of them are closer to the actual world than others. That's okay? You remember that? Does that all make sense? Yeah? You can pause this if it doesn't make sense. Okay. Each of these ideas is very simple, so if it seems at all complex, it's, it's because of the explanation, not because of the idea. Okay. So physicalism in these terms, you can put as the view that if two possible worlds are the same in all physical respects, then they're also the same in all psychological respects. Now, one of the things that has been attractive about this way of putting uh, what physicalism is, is it actually allows for a lot of tweaking. W what I mean is, uh, one way you could tweak that would be to say, that, that formulation says, if, blast it, if I, that formulation says, if I look through all of the space of possibilities, then, any two worlds, however remote, in which all the physical facts are the same are worlds in which all the mental facts are the same. And you might think, well, to be a physicalist, I don't really have to believe that in its full strength. Maybe you might say, all I need is that in every nearby world, in every um, world that's at all, uh, uh, that, that isn't a very remote contingency, uh, in any world like that, in any world that could easily happen if all the physical facts are the same, all the mental facts are the same. Maybe there are really weird worlds out here in the periphery of logical space where you could have all the physical facts the same, but different mental facts. But in any sensible world, if all the uh, physical facts are the same, all the mental facts are the same. So the general idea of supervenience is you've got a set of base facts namely, in this case, uh, the facts about the physics of the world, and then that determines uh, the, fact, the, the supervening facts, in this case, the facts about psychology. Yep? That's plain enough? Okay. Um, but then, once you start formulating physicalism like that, what that really is requiring is that if you take two possible worlds that throughout all of space and time are exactly the same in every physical detail, then all the psychological facts about what's going on in those two worlds will be the same. 
And intuitively, you don't really need anything as strong as that. Suppose that Earth is the only planet where there's sentient life. Yeah, suppose, just suppose for the moment that's true. Then why should it matter what's going on in Sirius B? I mean, you don't really require the two possible worlds should be the same in point of every single physical fact in order to have sameness of the psychological facts. And not all the physical facts are relevant to sameness or difference of psychological fact. If one molecule is just one electron different in Sirius B, that shouldn't matter whether you or I have the same mental state. We want some notion of the local or the relevant physical facts being the same. What you want really is that um, if two possible worlds are the same in all relevant physical respects, then they should also be the same in all psychological respects. You see what I mean? So I don't know if you can see what's coming. At this point, we settle down to quarrel about what the relevant physical respects are. And we could all agree that if one molecule being different in Sirius B shouldn't matter a bit for what the psychological states of the people in this room are. But can we get it any more fine-grained than that? Well, one natural way to get it more fine-grained than that is to say, if two people are the same, if two people are intrinsically the same in all physical respects, that is, if you've got two people and what's going on inside the boundary of the skin is exactly the same for both of them, then they'll be the same in all psychological respects. Yep. That's called internalism. Because it's only the physical facts that are internal to the person that matter for whether their psychological states are the same. Can you guess what the opposite of internalism is? Externalism, very good, <laughs> right. Um, and what does externalism say? Externalism says if two people and their environments are the same in all physical respects, then these people are the same in all mental respects. So the notion of environment here is not tremendously precise, but it, it would include, it would really include just things that you have causally connected with. So molecules out in Sirius B that have made no difference to you physically wouldn't be relevantly the part of your environment. Um, so if two people and their environments are the same in all physical respects, then these two people are the same in all mental respects. So internalism says all it takes is the stuff inside the skin to be physically the same, and they've got the same kind of mind. And externalism says, no, you actually need the stuff in the environment to be the same physically for the two people to have the same kinds of mind. Yep? Is this over a period of time? Uh, Very good. Uh, again, th th that's really up for dispute. Yeah, I, I, I hadn't been going to discuss that, but whether it, it really matters wh uh, whether you're thinking about sameness over time. Suppose that um, in world um, uh, in, in world 17, um, Bill is hopelessly in love. Yeah, and then in world 16. Bill's counterpart has the same physical state for 10 seconds. Could you be hopelessly in love for just 10 seconds? I mean, surely that's a mere infatuation <laughs> if it only lasts 10 seconds. You see what I mean? Um, some psychological states just might not last, that might not be capable of being things that you could be in only for a few seconds. You, you see what I mean? So in those cases, you would need to be considering a fairly extended period. And how extended is really up for dispute. If it's a pain or an itch, maybe that would, it would work if it was a very short period. Some psychological states, love of your country. Could you love your country for just 10 seconds? I was a real patriot for 10 seconds once. I mean, how, does, <laughs> how could that be? Uh, you, you see what I mean? Uh, is that addressing what you had in mind? Well, yeah, I, I was just, my question was, uh, 
whether it was possible to have this instantaneous mental state, like because it, at an instant, yeah. that didn't make any sense. I, I agree. Uh, the, uh, I, I, I just agree. It, it, I, as I said, one of the appeals of this uh, possible world's framework for thinking about these things is it lets you give an explicit statement of all these questions. Yeah, and this is a dimension I hadn't really been thinking of discussing. But you're right; it's an important one. Yeah. Can I just ask you, given that I stated internalism and externalism in those terms, and putting on one side for a moment the question about time? Let's suppose the time stretches as long as is needed. Yeah. Um, can you put your hand up if you think internalism is the right? Just straight off, I mean, as, as it first strikes you. What it takes for two people to be the same in all psychological respects is that inside the skin be the same physically. Put up your hand if you think that's right, if that would be enough. Yeah, this is just asking you what, what strikes you. Yeah, it's, it's not a trap. Um, <laughs> I mean, often my questions are traps, but this one is not a trap, I promise you. Um, OK, OK. And if you think, no, you've got to have the environment the same for it to be the same psychological states. Wow, that, that's a, a, a mild but uh, a significant majority in favor of externalism. OK, let, let's look at some of the arguments that people give. Here's um, Clark and Chalmer uh, explaining the notion of a coupled system so they have the notion of an epistemic action, where <coughs> what you do is there are all these cognitive tasks that you try and perform, and that uh, you set up gadgets that will help you perform those tasks. And I was just thinking the other day that um, phone numbers, you guys probably do not, never encountered this, but um, it used to be just 10, 15 years ago that most adults went about with um, between six and a dozen, sometimes more, of people's phone numbers memorized in their heads, right? I mean, presumably none of you guys can remember this, but the, the, there was a time when you didn't just key in someone's name and get their number come up. You, can, you, can you picture this, right? You had, to ha you had to have their number wired into your head if you wanted to ring them up without a lot of complicated looking up. So then you get this gadget that lets you offload that task onto something else. But other simple ways of doing it are, we, we talked about this a couple of times, you're trying to do a long division, so you do it on paper. You're doing the mental task on the paper. Or Scrabble, do people, do you guys play Scrabble? You, 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 know, what, you know what it is anyway, Scrabble? <laughs> OK, I, I never know. I, I, I never know, right? OK, Scrabble, we get all these tiles with letters on them, and you're trying to make words. Well, one thing you can do looking at the tiles is move them about in your head and say, oh, yeah, I get this word, I get that word. But another way of doing it is to move the tiles about, right? You see what I mean? You just physically move the tiles about. And that really helps. That makes it much easier. Um, or uh, once you get the hang of. Uh, this notion, there are obviously lots and lots of examples like this, diaries, um, calculators, anything with a computer is really doing that, offloading some of the cognitive work that you used to do in your head onto some gadget, yeah? So um, Clark and Chalmers say, in these cases, the human organism is linked with an external entity in a two-way interaction creating a coupled system that can be seen as a cognitive system in its own right. So if you're asking, is it you or the Scrabble tiles? Is it you or your phone that are doing this cognitive task? Well, really, it's both of you together. You are working with this gadget. You and the gadget. The gadget is a kind of um, cognitive tool. It's an extension of your mind um, that you are using to get the thing done. If we remove the external component, the system's behavioral competence will drop, just as it would if we removed part of its brain. Right? We have actually seen this already a couple of times in this class, that um, when the projector suddenly packs up, then you see that the, the, <laughs> the whole lecturer projector um, coupled system um, loses its competence, just as it would if you removed part of its brain. You, you see what I mean? That's a kind of commonplace phenomenon. 
So then they have this example of Inga. Inga wants to go to an exhibition at the Museum of Modern Art. Inga remembers that the Museum of Modern Art is in 53rd Street. So she goes to 53rd. Here is Otto, whose brain is maybe not in such good shape as Inga's. But in order to compensate for the deficiencies of his brain, Otto has the address of the Museum of Modern Art uh, written in a notebook in his pocket. So when he wants to go to the, to the Museum of Modern Art, he doesn't look inside his mind, just pull up uh, from his brain where the Museum of Modern Art is. He reaches inside his pocket and uh, looks in the notebook where the Museum of Modern Art is. And then he walks to 53rd. So functionally, if you look at what Inga's uh, brain-based recall is doing, and you look at what Otto's notebook-based recall is doing, are they functionally the same? Put up your hand if you think the answer is they are functionally the same. Yes, I mean, so far as we've considered anyway, of course, they're, they're, that's the whole point. They're doing just the same thing, right? He's got this want. He pulls out the notebook, and then he walks to 53rd, right? She's got this want. She uh, pulls it out of her brain. She walks to 53rd. They're doing the same functional work, the brain-based memory and the notebook-based memory. Yeah? So Otto's notebook has the same functional role as Inga's memory. So Otto's notebook is just as much part of his mind, it's just as much part of his mental life as Inga's memory is of hers. Yeah? There's no difference between the role that the brain is playing and the role that the notebook is playing. OK? Put up your hand if you think that's just fine. Put up your hand if you think that's kind of outrageous. Okay, very good. Uh, do you want to say anything? I was wondering if on the notebook thing, it's not at all similar to the memory. Uh huh. But in what way? It's functionally similar. Because what if she didn't have the notebook? Right, but what if she didn't have her brain? <laughs> or you, you see what I mean? Or that part of her brain? Uh, I see you can say what if you didn't have the notebook, but. But I, I, I sympathize, I mean, uh, um, but you see how you can already hear y yourself how hard that is to, yeah. to explain what you mean by that. Mm -hmm. Because after all, if you could make sense, I mean, it's just physically a bit more difficult to extract or a bit of Inga's brain. Habit. Sorry? Yeah, let's suppose it's, it's a notebook that he keeps chained to his wrist. <laughs> you know, you, um, <laughs> God himself would have a hard time getting that notebook off him. Uh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, uh, and let's suppose, on the other hand, that um, neuroscience has developed to the point where neurosurgeons can reach in in the twinkling of an eye, extract, extract a, an unwanted memory. Yeah? Then they look pretty similar. Yeah? Yeah, so it's, it's hard to explain a difference here. So now consider twin Otto. Twin Otto is just like Otto, except that twin Otto wrote in his notebook to the Museum of Modern Art is in 51st Street, right? So Otto and twin Otto are inside the skin, molecule for molecule identical, right? Neither of them have got that good brain-based recall. But they've both got their notebooks, and so they've got something different written in their notebooks. And Clark and Chalmers say, since they have something different written in their notebooks, they have different mental states. They have different beliefs. Their minds are in different conditions. So Otto and twin Otto are molecule for molecule identical <coughs> underneath the skin, but they have different beliefs in virtue of the difference in their notebooks. So uh, let me just conclude and then I'll, uh, uh, yeah. So, uh, is this an argument for internalism, or is this an argument for externalism? External, very good, right, okay. So the general picture is you've got the base facts, 
determining supervening facts, right? The physical facts determining facts about the mind. Um, the internal essay is, is internal base facts that determine what your psychological states are. But the idea here is um, the, that what beliefs you have doesn't depend only on the internal base facts. It also depends on these external base facts, like what you have written on the notebook in your pocket. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, could we argue that they're not molecules, not molecules, uh, identical? Otto and twin also, yeah. Why, why not? Well, because the whole point of the experimental argument was that like every molecule within them, like, including their brain, is identical. That's right. Read something different off the notebook. Right. The brain is different. <coughs> they're, yeah. They're visually receiving different information. Their visual cortex is lighting up right. a different way. Okay. Right, I, I agree that when each of Otto and Twin Otto read their notebook, and this is important, when each of Otto and Twin Otto read, read their notebooks, then they'll go into different physical, internal physical states. Yep. Um, but the notion of having a belief about where the museum is, it, well, let me put it like this. Um, do you, actually, I don't mean to put you in the spot, but let me just try this. Do you know where the art museum in Berkeley is? Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, so uh, it's right across Bancroft, right? Yeah. So, so um, how long have you known that? Yeah, a year or so maybe, yeah? yeah. Uh, okay, so, but have you been thinking about that continuously the whole way through? You see what I mean? You don't, it's not like you keep mumbling, oh my God, I mustn't forget, you know? <laughs> the art museum is right across Bancroft, right? You know, you sleep, you get, think about other things, right? But you think, all through that period, I had the belief. So there's the idea that I have the belief, but it's not always activated. It's not always current, yeah? It's not always fired up. So the thing about Otto and Twin Otto is that um, you write that when they get fired up, the internal facts about them will change, yeah? But even when they're not fired up, they can still be said to believe one of them that the museum is in 53rd Street or to believe the other of them that it's in 51st Street. <laughs> Just in the same way, you can be said to believe that the art museum is right across Bancroft um, uh, even when you're not firing up about that. I feel like you can make like a quasi-memory argument about this. You can say, like, you can take a memory slide and put it in someone's brain that they did remember this art museum and they saw it a year ago. Yeah. And, there. and then they only received it that moment. You ask them, when did you figure it out? And they're like, oh, yeah, I've known it's there for about a year. And they could have a belief that persists back through time, but they didn't have it until this moment. The, uh, you, they're believing about something that was happening a while ago. You mean the beliefs about what was going on a while ago? No, like they got the belief that the museum was across the street. Just they, a second ago. Just yeah. a second ago. Right. But they believe that they've known it for the last year. Okay, they're, and then they're making a mistake about that. But at the moment, they're physically the same as someone who had that thing, and so they have the belief. Yeah, but they're making a mistake about whether they had the belief for the last year. But does the mistake matter in terms of their psychological state? To an external observer, we go, that's a mistake, but to themselves, that's a psychological state. That's identical. Okay, this is getting quite complicated. <laughs> um, well, just one more thing, and there are actually quite a lot of people who want to ask questions, but... Well, so long as they've, suppose the quasi-memory was dropped into me a year ago, yeah? Then, I know that's different from your example, but then I've had that belief for a year, even if it hasn't been fired up all through the year, because I've got the traces there, the information is there, waiting for me to retrieve it. In the great filing system of the brain, the, that thing has been sitting there waiting to be called up for all year, yeah? In that sense, it really, in that case, it really is true that I've had that belief all year. And here the point is, um, for Otto and Twin Otto, uh, the filing system of the notebook is not really that different to the filing system of the brain. And so long as the notebook's been there in their pockets for a whole year, they count as really having had that belief for a whole year, not just thinking that they had that belief for a whole year. Yeah. Uh, Come back to this. And, uh, yeah. Um, when you say that they do, that they have the same beliefs, and that that belief is that whatever I wrote in my notebook. Oh, very good. <laughs> yeah, whatever I wrote in my notebook. Um, 
that's a, 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 that's a good move. But what Clark and Chalmers are claiming is something stronger, that uh, they have different specific beliefs about which street the, the thing is in because of the difference in, yeah. Um, let me think about this a second. That's a really good move because that would defend internalism, right? They've got the same belief when you describe it in that abstract way, but uh, once you get down to which, and which particular place is that, then they're going to have to look in the notebook to get a specific belief about that. Yeah. Um, I guess the idea would be that, yeah, that's a very interesting move. Um, with uh, for it to be really functionally the same, yeah. The move I began with was remember comparing Otto and Inga, yeah. That the notebook has the same role in Otto's mental life as Inga's brain has in hers, yeah. Then. Uh, Inga doesn't just have a belief that somewhere in my brain I've got the information about where the museum is, right? Inga might not even know that she has a brain. So, you see what I mean? I mean, yeah, <laughs> you, you could go through your entire life without realizing that you had a brain. <laughs> yes, <laughs> okay. Um, <coughs> and really, for this to be really functionally just the same, it would have to be kind of the same. Otto might not even realize he has a notebook. He just reflexively pulls it out and looks at it and says, I see 53rd Street. You see what I mean? Just the unreflective way that you call up your memories from your brain without knowing what you're doing. For that really to be the very same functional role. Yeah. So I think that's a very interesting challenge. That, that it really is not that plausible that Otto could do this without even realizing he had a notebook in the same unreflective way that Inga could do it without realizing that she had a brain. Yeah, I mean, it's, I, I realize it sounds kind of comic to say you might not even realize you had a brain, but all I wish to point out is it is also kind of comic if you say, if someone asks you where is the Museum of Modern Art, and you say, Let, <laughs> wait a minute while I check my brain. You see what I mean? You, you can say, it makes sense to say, wait a minute while I check my notebook, but not, I mean, while I check my brain is kind of weird. Yeah, I try to remember, but that's a different thing. Yeah. Okay, so that's a, that's a okay. Anyone else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Function in the sense that when we think of the or the figure, the tiny thing in Jacket. Uh huh. The problem is I don't I don't believe that uh, writing something on of a notebook counts as a real uh, memory. And the same uh, the same case could be if I uh, carry my cell phone in Oxford Dictionary, Grand or other. Yes, very good. Yeah, yeah. We don't, we don't believe that we have learned all the English words based on our dictionary. Excellent. But that's what Clark and Chalmers are saying. Yeah. You get the dictionary, you know all the words. <laughs> yeah. But it's completely different from if I had remembered them all in my mind. <laughs> it's different, but it, is it relevantly different? I mean, it could be just as easy for you to pull up the meaning of any word from the dictionary as it would be had you stored them all in your head somewhere? <laughs> yeah. There's a subtle difference here, which is um, if you really got all the words internalized, then you will just use them unreflectively. You see what I mean? And having a dictionary in your pocket won't let you do that. Yeah. But it can also be that you're thinking zygote. What's zygote? And you've got it somewhere in your brain. Yeah, and you can pull it up, but it takes a bit of an effort. Yeah, that can happen with um, <coughs> yes, technical vocabulary. Say you did a biochemistry course and never, then never did biochem again. You know, five years later, you might have to do that kind of pull up exercise for words that you uh, had learned then. That would be different to having it as part of your ordinary <laughs> unreflective vocabulary. Yeah. Uh, so, so if you think like that, maybe it looks a bit more similar having it in your brain and having it in your pocket. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Is it, is, was there anyone else?
Yeah. Right. Well, the thing about Otto and Twin Otto is that, that we're not challenging whether they understand what they read. We're taking it for granted. They understand what they read all right. Yeah. We're not giving an analysis of that. That's right. Um, and I see what you say, what you're saying, that um, all I've pointed to so far is the functional role. And the point, part of the point of the Chinese room is that the functional role is not enough for, for understanding. Yeah. But um, in the case that, in the ordinary case here, the reason that the stuff in the notebook has the functional role it does for Otto is that Otto understands what it's saying. Yeah. It's not just that he looks at it and then for reasons that are completely inscrutable to him, he just finds himself marching off to 53rd Street. Yeah. So I think they can build that into their example. Yeah, that there is semantic understanding here. Anything else on that? So I, I just like to know at this point, can, can you put your hand up if you think that Clark and Chalmers example is, is a good illustration of what you meant by externalism? That's pretty convincing about externalism. Uh, Otto and Twin Otto have different beliefs. I can only see one hand and a, one and a half. Okay. One, two. Okay. <laughs> right. Right. And if you think that's completely unconvincing, the uh, Otto and Twin Otto just do not have different beliefs. Okay. Well that's about four. What's going on? <laughs> and, and if you think. What, what is this auto and twin auto example? <laughs> yeah? It's so much in Genji because it's not. It, okay, it becomes a memory thing. Would like to go look at the notebook and see where the name is. Uh, memory? Yeah, because they're going to look at that and then remember the Genji. Yeah, that's right. What, 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 what's they got it in their heads? Yeah. But yeah. then it, it, once they have it in their heads, then there is no factual difference. That's right. But we're talking about before they pull it out. While they're just before moseying they out, along. Right. But before they pull it out, at that point, their beliefs are the same. That no, that's, okay, are, that, that's what's at issue, right. Their belief is that whatever's written in the notebook okay. is correct. Okay, that's that same move. Okay, th I, I agree that's a good move. Okay, I, I, I want to try and soften you up a bit on behalf of externalism in just a minute, but yeah, I, I, I just agree that's a good move, yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, right. Um, I think if you assume that as soon as you write down the address, you just forget about it, instead of deliberately trying to remember that address, then, then you could say that the notebook is internalized. Yeah. That would fit with internalism, is that right? Yeah. That would fit with hanging on to internalism. Okay, can you put your hand up if you think? Having now seen what externalism looks like, um, I'm kind of sympathetic to internalism. OK, put your hand up if you haven't voted in the last couple of rounds. I don't understand what's going on here. OK, why aren't you guys voting? What's, are the, does the question not make sense, or is it very hard? Or what, what's going on? Is the question badly posed? You know, the, the, I actually, I've now forgotten what the last question was. <laughs> right. um, the last question was, yeah, having now seen externalism means auto and twin auto have different beliefs, right? Because what's the base class determining what's in their mind includes the notebook. Yeah, right. So, yeah. So if and what I was saying was, if you now think, well, externalism means I've got to accept this thing about the notebook being part of your mind, then I don't believe that. If that's your position, can you put up your hand? OK. And if you think, no, that thing about the notebook sounds just fine to me. Well, OK. But I don't understand you guys who are not voting for what? what? <laughs> Is it that you understand the question perfectly well, but you're just thinking, I really don't know which way to go in that? Put your hand up if that's the case. And if you're thinking, I just don't get what the question is. 
Okay. <laughs> a number of you are leaving. That's fairly inscrutable. Okay, yeah? Yeah. Yes. Yes, right. What's really doing the work here is the internal stuff. Yeah. The external stuff is just auxiliaries. Yeah, <coughs> I, I, I see that. I should say there is something kind of zeitgeisty about the Clark and Chalmers thing here because, I mean, it's just kind of obvious that there, in a million ways computational gadgets are helping every day and more and more every day, r really helping uh, us do cognitive tasks. And then it's a really interesting question. Is that making a fundamental difference to what the mind is, having all these tools? I mean, how, how radical a change is it making? And this is really a simple, dramatic proposal about how it could be making a huge difference. Let me give you another kind of example that um, Clark and Chalmers mention, uh, th though they don't make much of it. Uh, I mean, but it's been tremendously discussed, the idea of twin earth. Twin Earth? We haven't come across Twin Earth before. Twin Earth? Okay, well, here's the idea. Suppose that somewhere far, far away in a distant galaxy is a solar system just like ours, a sun just like ours, an Earth just like ours, a USA just like this one, a Berkeley just like this one, a lecture room just like this one, and people in it who each are molecule for molecule duplicates of you or me. So in particular, there's a mo molecule for molecule duplicate of you on twin earth. Okay, you with me so far? Is that the same time? Is that the same time? That's right. Absolutely in sync. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, there you go. Okay, and follow me very closely, okay? You, okay, and just so you can see the situation, this is a factual photo of Earth, and this is twin Earth. <laughs> and as you can see, they are very, very similar, right? Okay, yes? Now, on Earth, there is a Hawaii, yeah? And on twin Earth, there is what? A twin Hawaii, yes, exactly, right. And again, here is a photo of Hawaii on Earth, and here is a photo of twin <laughs> Hawaii. And I, I, can you see this? The, 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 yeah. I can, can you see the similarity? They, they are really very, very alike. Um, in fact, they are molecule for molecule identical. Yeah. Okay, so you got the picture, right? Now, suppose that you are thinking about Hawaii. Suppose that as you, <laughs> just to take an entirely hypothetical example, you're thinking to yourself, my God, if only I had bunked off, I could be in Hawaii. Um, yeah, so you are thinking about Hawaii. Now, meanwhile, completely in sync on twin Earth, gazillions of miles away, your duplicate, well, what is your duplicate thinking about? Is your duplicate thinking about Hawaii? Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> Put up your hand if you think the answer is Hawaii. And if you think the answer is twin Hawaii. Yes, that must be the right answer. I mean, your twin has never been within a gazillion miles of Hawaii. Your twin has no idea that such a place exists, right? So your twin can only be thinking about twin Hawaii. You see? You're thinking about this one, and your twin is thinking about that one, right? So you're thinking about different places. That all right? So you and your twin 
are thinking about different places. You're having different thoughts. Yes? Uh. No? <laughs> okay, well, let's, let's, take, let's take this slowly. The, the, this is actually really important, this, the, this issue. Um, why not? I mean, you're th you, if you're thinking um, uh, uh, if you're thinking something about Hawaii, then whether or not what you're saying is true depends on how things are at this place on Earth. If your twin is thinking about twin Hawaii, then what they're thinking, then whether what they're thinking is true depends on how things are with that quite different place. One of you could be right, and one of you could be wrong. You see what I mean? So there must be different thoughts that you're having. Yep? Uh, is, is everything the same kind of background that you would have been ah. in the I make the following claim. You're thinking about different places. You and your twin are thinking about different places. Yeah? Even though you are molecule for molecule identical. For every molecule in you, there's a corresponding molecule in just the same condition inside the skin of your twin. But you're thinking about different places because Hawaii is the one that you've interacted with and twin Hawaii is the one that your twin has interacted with. So your thoughts, your beliefs are different even though you're molecule for molecule identical. Well, if a mental state, if belief is a mental state, yeah, then if two beliefs were the same, then one, if one of them's true, then the other one's got to be true. If one of them's false, the other one's got to be false. Yeah? No, I, I don't actually think that's true. Uh, I mean, I don't think the concept of true or false has really anything to do with one's mental state. Uh huh. Well, Remember uh, talking about Churchland and talking about Dennett? We were talking about propositional attitudes. Yeah? Believing that the University of California was founded in whenever it was, uh, 1868. Yeah? Uh, I said belief is an attitude to a proposition. And what class I said is a proposition? A proposition is something that's capable of being true or false. Is that all right? Yeah? Hopes that fears that. These are all attitudes to propositions. So if the mental state is an attitude to a proposition, then if one person um, has the belief that is defined as, a, uh, that is um, specified by specifying which proposition, then if another person's belief is specified by specifying a different proposition, then those are different beliefs. No, that contains a proposition. I didn't, yeah, if I said contains, I may have said contains a belief, but if I did, that was a mistake. Uh, sorry, you, say that again. Well, you, if you're saying that the mental state is the belief, then you can That's have right. a belief. And then whether it's true or false merely invalidates the propositional attitude. Uh, that's right, but the belief is the propositional attitude. The belief is is one of the parts, and then there's the, it can be true or false part, which is the propositional attitude. At least that was the way I understood. I think I don't disagree, but a belief can be true or false. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so your belief is true if it's true because of what's going on with Hawaii here. Your twin's belief is true if it's true because of what's going on over there. So they are different beliefs. One can be true and the other can be false. How could that be if they were really just the same belief? Matters. Well, uh -huh. yeah. I mean, I don't think it affects anything in terms of what mental state you're having. Someone I, else can come up to you and say what you just thought was wrong, but doesn't right. change what you thought. I still thought it, even if it was wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But my mental state is something that's capable of being right or wrong. Yeah. I mean, otherwise, yeah. philosophical discussions, political debates, and so on would all be a complete waste of time, right? <laughs> if you said, well, beliefs can't be right or wrong. Yeah. As a capability being right or wrong. Um, 
So uh, if two beliefs can be right or wrong independently of one another, then they can't be the same belief. Well, they're both capable of being right or wrong. Independently of one another. Their actual state of being right or wrong may be different. Like, for example, right. on Twitter, if you could... Mm -hmm. At that's that right. exact moment, the volcano erupted, and now right. this guy is completely black. Right. And he doesn't know this. Right. And on normal Earth, it's fine. Right. But I would think the mental state about Hawaii sky being blue is the same, whether or not it's a description of something, or whether or not it's a description of something. You, they can't, but, but that's the argument. They can't be the same if one can be true and one can be the other one false. I mean, how could that be? If I say to you, I completely agree with you, I share your beliefs, but your beliefs are false, and mine are true. <laughs> that can't be right. Yeah? If we both, if you and I have exactly the same beliefs, you know, I say you and I really are shoulder to shoulder on this deal with Iran. Yeah? But everything you're thinking is wrong and everything I'm thinking is right. That, that, that makes no sense. If you and I really have the same beliefs about this deal, then if what you're thinking is right, then what I'm thinking must be right too. And if what you're thinking is wrong, then what I'm thinking must be wrong too. I think that follows on terms. But like, <laughs> if you something that's exactly identical, you can't use your intuition in that way. Uh huh. Because that, okay. that's a completely foreign example that we can't really address. Well, okay. His thoughts on the Iran nuclear deal on Twin Earth, you can yes. both think is a good thing, but on his Twin Earth, they actually have already made nuclear weapons that are going to launch them everywhere. Right, very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but that just shows you don't have the same beliefs. If I'm saying to my, if I'm communicating via intergalactic phone with your double on Twin Earth, and I say, I completely agree with you about this Iran deal, right? That's not actually the right way to put it, because we're talking about different things. He's talking about a deal over there. I'm talking about a deal here. We don't, we're not, we don't actually share opinions. I mean, to put it another way, I could have all my current views about the Iran deal here, but completely disagree with your twin over there about with the Iran deal and twin earth. Okay. There is. I, I agree. There is. I agree. There is more to say in this. Yeah. 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 The that, that does make sense. I yeah. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, not for the first time. You guys are ahead of me. The, 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 the thing that you two are saying, uh, I actually want to come on to in a second. Th does that thing about the qualia, the experience, does that connect with? Yeah. Are you thinking of it? Yes. That word for it. Yeah. Word. Okay. Okay, good. Um, okay. Um, at any rate, whether you agree or not, the, the, the claim I'm making here is what propositional attitudes you have, do you, what thoughts you're having, depends on what things are around you. You can only think about the things that you're actually interacting with. Yeah? Someone um, uh, light years away on Twin Earth can't be thinking about the same people and places as you because they've never interacted with them. That's okay? But they're all identical. What do you mean they're all identical? Earth and look. Earth and twin earth are different places. They are light years apart. But it would take you um, um, a very long it would take the Starship Enterprise a very long time <laughs> to get from here to there. And if you said, well, it's just the same place, <laughs> that, would, that would make the voyages of the Starship Enterprise completely pointless. They're different places. Are you saying what the Starship Enterprise is doing is pointless? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Steady on. Everything's going to be happening here is exactly identical to what's happening there. So, like, 
It's very similar, right? But it's not one and the same. I feel like um, something about here is like something that we talked about a while ago is that like you can't have two things that are exactly the same be in like two different physical spaces because uh-huh. at that point they're different just by their location. That's right. They are different and just like by their location. They would only be like extraordinarily like similar to each other. They wouldn't be the same. That's right. If they're in different places, then they can be extraordinarily similar, but they're not going to be one and the same. Exactly. I, I think that's completely correct. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yep. Yep. Uh, yep. Okay. I guess it just comes down to yeah. Of course, it's different things because they're different matters. But um, when it comes down to whether it matters that they're different, I think that. Uh huh. Yeah. Other, it's going to seem exactly the same, so it's functionally the same. Right, okay. It, it functionally seems the same. I mean, it functionally will be the same. But it can really matter. I mean, suppose I want to, vi- suppose my father's grave is on Hawaii, yeah? Uh, and I want to visit my father's grave, and I'm whisked off to, t- to Twin Earth and taken to a grave in Twin Hawaii, yeah? It'll be functionally very similar. But it's not the one I wanted to visit. Yeah? Yeah? (laughs) I mean, two situations can be very, very similar to the point that you can't tell which is which, but it still really might matter to you which one you're in. Sentimental, yeah. Right. Boy, okay. You're hard. I mean, suppose, look, suppose, suppose you have someone whose firstborn child is whisked away, yeah? But um, the kindly geneticists at the hospital say, actually, we've got the photos. We can build one that's just like the old one. So you can't tell the difference. That kind of sentiment that says, oh, that really matters. We should just whisk that away. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> I'm I'm so relieved, right? Sometimes I think there is a generation thing. Yeah, um, it's like, well, I think you carry about the same amount of Uh huh. You mean you should t- take? I see. Yeah, yeah. This isn't actually your father's grave, but this will do just as well. <laughs> it's very, very similar. You say, oh well, okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think people actually think that. You know, if, you're, if your spouse is whisked away and you get a duplicate. There's actually a short story by Isaac Beshev, a singer, about um, a, a man who sets out on a journey from his home village and um, each night when he's walking, uh, outside his tent, he leaves his shoes pointing in the direction that he's going in. Yeah. Um, and one night, after he's been out on his trek for a couple of weeks, one night someone shifts round his shoes in the middle of the night. So he just keeps walking. And after many weeks, he comes back to his home village and he finds that the world is even stranger than he thought. He says, my God, this village is just like my home village. These people look just like the people in my home village. This woman looks just like my wife. But he doesn't say, well, this is just as good. You see what I mean? He's remained distanced from all of them because he thinks these weren't the people he knew. Yeah, these weren't the people he thought about. Okay. Okay, so internalism is saying if two people are the same in all physical respects inside the skin, then they're the same in all mental respects. But what this uh, Twin Earth, Twin Hawaii case shows, if, if what I said is right, is that that's, that's a mistake. Because you and your twin are in different internal states. But what your thoughts are depends on your environment. What you're thinking about depends on what you're causally interacting with. So you can't think of the mind as something internal to the head. The mind has got to be how should I say, spread out across the environment. 
The mind contains the environment as a constituent. Which things you're thinking about depends on what's in your environment. So we've got to be externalists. We've got to say, if two people and their environments are the same in all physical respects, then those people are the same in all mental respects. Yeah? So it's got to be that um, it's external and plus internal base facts that are constituting your mind. Externalism must be true. Can you put your hand up if you think that's right? Okay, no, okay. We're finally getting onto the same page, <laughs> right? <laughs> we'll see. Um, so if you get two possible worlds um, that are the same in all, uh, you, you've got the same internal physical facts plus the same environment, then you've got the same mental states. That's the right way to state physicalism, if what I, said, if what I just said is right. The, I mean, some of what you guys have said are telling lines of thought in favor of, of fight back for internalism. But this is a pretty powerful case, it seems to me. The, 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 this kind of twin earth example was given by Hilary Putnam. Actually, yeah, Putnam keeps coming up, right? But Putnam did this back in the 1970s, this kind of example um, that provoked a lot of discussion. It actually bears on, I mean, the Ch you, you guys brought up the Chinese room already, but you remember this guy? Yes, the dear old Chinese rumor. Um, it suggests one diagnosis of what the Chinese rumor is missing. <coughs> um, we talked about the kind of, you, you, you guys suggested the systems response. They said you can't just look at this guy to see whether there's understanding of Chinese here. Uh, you've got to look at the room. And I kept coming back and saying, yeah, but suppose you just put the shell of a room around him. How does that convert something that doesn't understand Chinese into a system that does understand Chinese? But what this stuff about Hawaii suggests is that what object you're thinking about depends on how you're embedded in your environment. You can't just think about the mind in isolation from the environment. That makes no sense. If you take the mind in isolation from the environment, that's why you're getting this phenomenon of something that's only got syntax and no understanding. Because what understanding takes is for you to be wired up to your surroundings in the right kind of way. So uh, to understand what thinking is, it's not enough to just look at the internal machinations of the mind. You've got to look at how the mind is causally connected to the things around it. Um, and of course, that's completely different to Descartes. Right? Descartes was saying, it might all be a dream. In, in everything, the, the physical world might not be there. And I would still be having the very same thoughts. But if you really buy that, what, what I said about Twin Earth and Twin Hawaii and all that, that's a mistake. If you were, had been in twin, on Twin Earth, you'd be thinking not about Hawaii, but about Twin Hawaii. And if there wasn't any physical surrounding at all for your mind, you wouldn't be thinking about Hawaii. You wouldn't be thinking about Twin Hawaii. You wouldn't be thinking about anything at all. If you were really just a mind with no physical surroundings, you wouldn't be having any thoughts about anything at all. Yeah, That's the lesson of this kind of example. I mean, it's a very simple example, but it's very powerful, very far-reaching in uh, what it's telling you about the mind. I notice that, uh, I mean, if you're, a Dick, if you're a Cartesian dualist, you're thinking, um, what the mind is is a bit of ectoplasm with um, all these thoughts running through it, right? These thoughts are going through the ectoplasm. And it ultimately doesn't matter what's going on out there. But that kind of picture has got real trouble with these coupled systems you hooked up to auto hooked up to the to his notebook or um uh you and your double and twin earth with hawaii because these causal connections to your environment just shouldn't be mattering for what's in your mind on a kind of ectoplasmic picture but what this suggests is that the way that we actually do think about the mind in real life when we're talking about who's thinking about what you're constantly demanding that people be causally connected to the objects of their thoughts 
in order for them to be thinking about these things at all. Is that plain enough? Let me just check. Put up your hand if at this point you think the case for externalism is pretty powerful. Okay. Put up your hand if you think the case for externalism is, is pretty powerful, but I still don't believe that thing about the notebooks. Okay. And if you think at this point I'm, I'm softened up, I'm happy to give you the thing. If I get, you persuaded me about the Hawaii, twin Hawaii thing, so I'll give you the notebooks too. Put up your hand if you think that's, okay. <laughs> okay, that's very interesting. Okay, so we've got, uh, uh, yeah. We're still not buying the notebooks by and large. It's a significant minority going with the notebooks, but um, yeah, externalism generally, yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. I'm saying uh, you can't. Uh, th 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 what someone suggested earlier was that might be right for qualia. Yeah, that works for qualia. There's a cause of the qualia. But the thing about the Hawaii and twin Hawaii case is that you can't separate the question. That was what all that to and fro was about, uh, was that you can't separate the question what your thought is from the question what you're causally connected to. It's not that. I and my twin on twin earth are having the same thoughts, but they're just different things that are causing us to have them. It's rather, since different things are causally connected to us, we are thereby having different thoughts. Yeah, that's what I mean. The, the, the environment is constituting your mind. Yeah, it's not just causing your mind. But as someone said earlier, you might actually argue is different for qualia. And it seems to be a coherent package to be an internalist about qualia and an externalist about thoughts. Yeah, what you and I were banging away about was whether to be an externalist about attitudes, about thoughts. Yeah, but it was, you, you could say, okay, I'm going to give you the externalism for thoughts, but what I really what, what the mind proper is the qualia, the thrills, the feelings, the experiences. That's the important thing. The consciousness. That's the thing that matters about the mind, and I'm an internalist about that. So, with Otto and Twin Otto, you say, we, uh, Clark and Chalmers are saying, well, they've got different beliefs in virtue of the difference in their notebooks, just as you and your twin and twin earth have different beliefs in virtue of a difference in your connections to your environment. Um, but couldn't we be uh, externalist about propositional attitudes? Um, and internalists about qualia. There's a, a story that da Donald Davison had that um, this is a little bit of a scary story. So if you're of a nervous disposition, you might want to kind of blot out this next couple of minutes. But here is the story. It's midnight. It's midnight and in a swamp outside town. There's a thunderstorm. And as it rolls overhead, there's suddenly a tremendous bolt of lightning that strikes the swamp. And in the swamp, a strange chemical reaction is set off. And out of all the algae and slime in that fetid swamp, there clambers a creature, a creature recognizably human, swamp man. Now, as you can see, Swamp Man looks very like you. <laughs> Once we get him cleaned up a bit. What? <laughs> um, well, you've got to get him cleaned up a little bit. Um, and in fact, let's suppose once the lightning has struck the swamp, Swamp Man is molecule for molecule identical to you, right? 
The swamp man just comes out at midnight like that, molecule for molecule identical to you. So what's swamp man's frame of mind on coming out of the swamp? If you are, let's say, at that moment, lying in bed, thinking about those happy moments on your fifth birthday party, yeah? What is Swamp Man thinking about? That same birthday party. Was Swamp Man at your fifth birthday party? Does Swamp Man know anything about your fifth birthday party? Sorry? He has the memories of it. Yeah, but let's just bear in mind, when was Swamp Man created? In your, yeah. In your mind, your memories are created by you. Yes. So you would have to have them before. He's not causally connected. He was created by a random bolt of lightning hitting a fetid swamp. Right? It's only a coincidence that he's so very similar to you. <laughs> It's exactly like your brain, yeah. Picks up. Uh, he all I said was he's physically very similar, right. yeah, um, but it's just a coincidence. I mean, I don't, I don't know if I have to go through for you how lightning and swamps work, but <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not a copying process, yeah. Um, it's just a coincidence so that it came out. I don't know. I don't, I don't know any plain or English in that. He is molecule for molecule identical to you. I don't know what you mean in what right, way. In every way. Memory. Sorry? Let's suppose memories that are a physical thing in your brain. Is memory a causal notion class? In order to remember an event, does your impression that that event occurred have to be caused by that event having occurred? Yes. Good. <laughs> right. Okay. Are Swamp Man's memory impressions caused by any past events? Was Swamp Man, for example, at your fifth birthday party? <laughs> no, you'd remember. <laughs> right. um, so can Swamp Man be remembering your fifth birthday party? No, Does right. He can be. He can. Ha well, what does under the impression right mean? He can't have any thoughts about any of the stuff around him. He can't have thoughts about Hawaii. Yeah. No, he's never. He's n no interaction with Hawaii at all. No more interaction than someone in Twin in Twinner has had with Hawaii. Yeah, he doesn't have the right kind of environmental embedding. He is not embedded in the world in such a way that he can have thoughts about it. Does he have a mind? Yeah. Well, I guess that's what I wonder. This is kind of picking up what people were saying earlier. Surely he has qualia. Surely he has experiences. When he's coming out of the swamp, he may be saying, my God, this is wet and icky. You know, I can't wait to have a nice hot bath, or, 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 right? I mean, he may have qualia, feelings. He just can't have thoughts about the things that you have thoughts about. So, you can have two people with the same physical state and different propositional attitudes. You and your counterpart in Twin Earth, you and your counterpart in Twin Earth are embedded in different environments. So even though you're molecule for molecule identical, you have different thoughts. Um, you and Swamp Man are molecule for molecule identical, but Swamp Man's embedded, Swamp Man's not embedded in any environment at all. So Swamp Man doesn't really have any thoughts as yet. But if you, could, if you and Swamp Man and your double and twin earth, if one of you's in pain 
Or the others in pain? They're exactly the same inside the skin. Yeah? So your impulse would be to say yes. Well, because they have C fiber. Right. If one of them's got C fiber firing, they've all got C fiber firing. Well, yeah? no, you're saying they're identical. Yes, that's right. Yes, yeah, so that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. If one of them has got C fiber firing, then all of them have C fiber firing. And what I mean is, Swamp Man, you're on your double and twin earth, and you. Yep. Yep. Whether you have pain? Yes, but then you'd be different inside the head. Yeah. But what I mean is, as the last questioner said, if you if you've all got C fiber firing, everything inside your skin is exactly the same. So you've all got C fiber firing, and let's suppose you are all screaming. Yeah? Then if one of you's in pain, are all of you in pain? I think what people were saying earlier was yes, right? That swamp swamp man is not I mean it's <laughs> you and your double in Hawaii, you're not completely unlike because your internal feelings are presumably just the same even if you're thinking about different things in the world around you. So here's a possibility. Is that Incidentally, is that clear? I guess I'm assuming that everybody's happy with that distinction between propositional attitudes and qualia. Is that okay? Is your chance to pause me if, you, if it's not? Yeah. So I'm still a little unclear on like, what quasi-memories are. So Qua yeah. No. A quasi-memory, remember the example of brain slides? Yeah. A quasi-memory, quasi-memory has to be just like a memory, except you'd n you need not to be not the past event at the time. Yeah. You need, you'd need not to be present at the remembered event. Yeah. It's just like a memory in every other way. So a memory requires that causal connection from the past event through to the present impression that the, memory, that the thing happened. So the swamp man doesn't have this because he wasn't there. Exactly. He, he, yeah. Swamp man doesn't even quasar. He doesn't, certainly doesn't remember stuff because he wasn't at any of that stuff. And he doesn't quasar remember because if I explained the technicalities of the situation right, the lightning bolt hitting the swamp, that was just an accident. It wasn't caused by what really went on. Whatever is causing mental states from memories or whatever memory impressions or whatever you want to call them, because it really doesn't matter much else, uh, wouldn't that have to be physical information in the brain, in which case the mental states that the swamp man derived from his memory impressions or quasar memory or whatever he had, yep. wouldn't that have to be the same, even though they are not causally connected at all? Uh, well, that, that's what I don't see. That, that, that's the point about um, propositional attitudes and the Hawaii case, that what's inside the head is just the same, but which thoughts you're having is different. Um, I'm sorry, I don't, <laughs> I'm not really seeing how to explain this in, su in such a way that I don't just re keep repeating myself. Um, do you see why I say that you and your twin are having different thoughts? Yeah. yeah? Uh, okay then if you still look for something the same, then isn't really what you're after to be an internalist about qualia? That if two people are the same in all physical respects, then they're the same in all those experiential respects, but they may be different in which thoughts they're having. They were not the same in all qualia. Who's not the same in all Quelia? You could have supervenience, but the Quelia could be different. With two people who are molecule for molecule identical. Yeah. That was <laughs> you have to forgive me. I don't remember arg arguing that, but m maybe I did. <laughs> but <laughs> I, uh, I don't actually want to revert back to my earlier discussion. 
Okay. Um, okay, you really rattled me now. Um, I, I don't remember arguing that you could have people who are molecule for molecule identical but with different qualia, but I can't rule it out. I don't remember. Does anybody else remember me arguing that? I because you were talking about uh, physical information is not there, so there would be the exact same, or at least half exact as Arkin because it's referring back to. Yeah, yeah. I I actually want to develop something like externalism about qualia next time. Yeah, um, <coughs> and actually in connection with Jackson's argument. So um, I don't remember explicitly arguing that. Um, but you're right if you picked up that was where the discussion was going. And I will try and, uh, in, in reviewing what's going on, I will try to make the case for externalism about qualia. For the moment, I just want to say, I, I want to say that given these twin earth cases, um, the, uh, the case for externalism about proposition latitudes seems very powerful. Um, but as you guys were suggesting, there's, you could be an externalist about propositional attitudes, but an internalist about qualia. Okay, have a great Thanksgiving, guys. Okay, thank you.